if you asked me six months ago, even after COVID started, if you asked me, I would have been like, Trump's the winner. Clear cut as day. He's going to get a second term. Now it's not so clear for me. It's, it's been muddied a lot. As well, for myself and my own beliefs and who I would vote for and all that, I, I fuck. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Talk Junkies, where uh, we are just a few weeks away from the presidential elections that are going to impact our lives for the next four years. Um, uh, we have another brilliant guest joining our show tonight, but before I go into that, I just want to do a couple of things. Uh, the first thing is, last week's podcast, we had Pat from Truth, Money, Freedom join the show. We had a great discussion um, about current events that are going on in the world right now, the pandemic, the Federal Reserve, all that good stuff. Check out that last podcast. Check out Truth, Money, Freedom podcast uh, and, and join join him. Um, secondly, I just want to shout out, man, I lost a really close friend of mine, <clears throat> um, this week. I'm not too entirely sure uh, on how he had passed away, but he was young. It's someone that I, um, I rapped or uh, someone I, I did music with probably like 10 years ago. Um, I did, I, I, I'm a rapper, sorry. I'm getting a little choked up right now, but, uh, super Dave slash Willie Lee man has, um, passed away. And I'll probably put one of his songs at the end of the podcast so you guys can enjoy his music. But uh, he was a very dear friend to me. And I just want to let you know, Willie, I love you. I know Jesse loves you. And Yeah, no, I, I, Will, I, Willie was one of the most charismatic individuals I've ever met in my life. I only like, met him once, but he was hilarious. Amazing, amazing individual. Just wanted to put a smile on people's faces. No, it's a, you yeah, know, that, that, one's, that one's rough. It is rough, man. But uh, we'll always be thinking about you, Willie. And uh, there's that. Um, but, ladies and gentlemen, tonight's podcast is going to be very uh, informative, amazing, delicious for you to just take in and eat whenever you want to eat it. An hour of your time. Maybe People listen to podcasts usually, but I like yeah. it. <laughs> uh, an hour of your time. He's been on Talk Junkies multiple times. He's written a few books as well. Two of the books are sitting on our desk right now, so check those books out. Links will be in the description below. Mike Anderson, welcome to Talk Junkies, man. Thank you. Good to be here. Written, Paul. He has written. He has <laughs> written. He hasn't written. He hasn't written anything. Did I say written? You, you said wrote. Damn, bro. I was, I was just feeling it. I'm sorry, man. And we're Midwest. We're Midwest. <laughs> you got to give us a little bit of slack here. Yeah. <laughs> it's, good to ha it's good to have you back, Mike. It's been a while. I, yeah. always, I always love our podcast with Mike. Absolutely. What's, uh, what's going on in the world of Mike? Election time. <laughs> so... We want to talk about that a little bit. I thought if we could do a pre-election podcast, then we could do a post-election sometime and rehash all the bad assumptions we made. See or how whatever. wrong we all were. Right. <laughs> yeah, for so, sure, man. I'm we're all down to do that, but I'm just curious. Anything going on in your life right now? Um, you, you're still writing? Well, I'm right still, we're still editing the third book. It's 10 out of 12 chapters have been edited, so it's pretty close to getting to the end the fruition nice. hope i'm pretty sure it'll be out by the end of the year very nice very nice good uh, man. So that's that takes takes time well in, in time we have and, and a lot of that with all of the, the covid restrictions going on right now and all that good stuff but man yeah let's hit it hard um t tonight we're going to go into predictions about what we all think is going to happen with the up up and coming elections here in a couple weeks um i think mike let's start it off with you man uh, what are your predictions? Who's going to win? Um, and why do you think that? Well, let me put a little uh, preamble on that prediction thing. So let's start. Let's frame the discussion a little bit. So, sure. you know, we're in a tribal estate as a country. Uh, something that's, you know, at the center of all my writing. Um, and we're probably, I, I've been thinking about 
how bad is this compared to American history? And I think it's probably in either second or third place. Uh, the most tribal state the country's ever been in was the Civil War, obviously, because we were tribal enough to kill each other. Mm -hmm. So nothing has come close to that in the history of the country. The other competitor for the current time is uh, when the country first got started. And I don't know if I've talked about this with you guys before, but when Washington was elected president, he had Hamilton and Jefferson in his cabinet, and they had radically different views of government. Uh, Hamilton believed in a centralized government. Jefferson believed in like a, a republic of the state owners, you know, states' rights, weak federal government. Uh, they were at each other's throats all the time. It got to the point where they couldn't stand each other and they both quit the cabinet. And eventually, um, that argument formed the basis for the political parties that formed. Uh, Jefferson's party was the Democrat Republican Party, and Hamilton's was the Federalist Party. So that was a period of great argument. Um, both Hamilton and Jefferson actually uh, funded their own newspapers to throw mud at the other guy. I mean, it was really bad. But you can't compare it to now because the way communications were then, most Americans probably didn't even know that was going on. So because we had a very small government located in Philadelphia, and that was all kind of happening without anybody's knowledge. Everyone was reading those papers, though. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, whoever got the paper, you're right. But it was, it was probably more urban folk than country folk who were reading the yeah, paper. Yeah, people living out on their farm just living their life, you know. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The thing that makes this situation now different is, and we could talk about this, is the media um, is so much a part of it, and you have to add social media to, you know, print and broadcast media because... Even more so. Right. Because of Facebook and Twitter, I mean, all this stuff is in our face all the time. And, and the most radical ideas have a forum, and people post their thoughts and ideas and their anger and all that. And that skew, to me, it skews reality. Because if you're paying attention to those media all the time, all you're hearing is fighting. And, it, you know, it, if you didn't have the media, there wouldn't, it wouldn't be in our face all the time. I mean, it would be on the broadcast news, but it wouldn't be on social media. So it, it's hard to know how much the media contributes to tribalism. It makes everybody angrier because there's so many things that are said in anger, then, and then somebody reads it and they get mad and and argue back, whatever. It's the tribalism thing. So, um, and of course, you know, the kind of centerpiece of this is the Democrats have never accepted the fact that Trump got elected. Uh, he's a businessman. He's not a politician. He doesn't exhibit any of the personal characteristics that they respect. And they think he stole the election. And so they tried to get rid of him for four years. We all know the story there. Um, and he's not, he has his faults. He's not, you know, I, I don't like his personality and the way he behaves. Uh, but it's certainly been harder to govern when you're attacked all the time. So um there's several ways to view the election i mean there's a which tribe are you in and i mean it, it can go to rid, a ridiculous degree for example you can decide to vote based on abortion because you if you support making the court more conservative and you want a president's going to name judges you can just vote for trump for that reason forget everything else and so the issues have lined themselves in the tribes and um that's that's the way it's going to be we can't predict what's going to happen as we talked about previously because we don't know how accurate the polls are mm -hmm. so can, can i ask you a real quick question uh and i'm probably bringing this up like incorrectly and at the wrong time but as far as 
I was talking to Johnny about this the other day, uh, about Bernie Sanders and about how excited I was personally for Bernie Sanders and being a Bernie Sanders supporter. And then the DNC literally just screwed him over, even though he had the, the majority support from the liberal side to get um, Hillary Clinton to yeah. be to be the candidate running, and but somehow that's not brought up like like at all as far as any it's as far up as for like two months after it happened and then everybody yeah just kind and of then and then everybody it. forgot about it and then it was well, so because he probably got bought bought off by by you know the, it's obvious to all the Democrats what happened they felt they had a better chance running Hillary so they rigged it for Hillary. Because I think it was the special delegates or something, they rigged the numbers so that no matter what Bernie won in the primaries, the special delegates could could nominate her. Bernie which had is, all the young such, people. Which Bernie, Bernie a, had all the young, passionate, fire up under their ass quick. individuals to, well, to vote. What Mike's saying, though, like, explaining how it was actually rigged and set up, it's, it's such a joke to me that, A, that that can even be done, and B, that like by doing that, like, how dumb do you think we are? Do you not think you just screwed yourself over? Because now, all of a sudden, the people who were, like, Bernie or bust, basically, were all of a sudden like, what, you think just because you rigged it and now you're the Democratic candidate that we're going to vote for you? Now we're just not going to vote. And, and then that screwed vote. them over, too. They didn't vote. The young yeah. people didn't vote. You saw that in the numbers. Yeah. There was just no voting that was happening yeah. there because they were upset because we we wanted our candidate no they, they felt like the, if the system can cheat on that level at just the dnc if that can be cheated then like why vote at all was a lot of people's views on it i feel like well what same thing happened this time though mm-hmm. remember super tuesday and biden won super tuesday and then they said well all you other people drop out and they did yep. so they never had most of the rest of the primaries because they had the, the powers that be decided that Biden would be the candidate. I hate that. I hate yeah, that. That's, it's how, so that, stupid. That's yeah. It's works. so stupid. 100%. It's so stupid. It's frustrating. Any Anybody hearing, and this isn't even outside of your party, you should just be frustrated by the system a little bit, right? Oh, yeah. If you're a Republican, you should be and, upset and at and what happened hear, at the DNC. Like, even, like, Mike, like, your opinion on this, do you, do you feel as though the system itself is a little frustrating? Or compromised, even at that point. Well, I, I don't. I don't want to go that far, but th- this can lead to an interesting discussion because, you know, in the old days, let's say before 1930, in in fact, I don't even remember. I think primaries weren't invented till the 50s, so there are no primaries before that. The party got together. They, they always talk, give this story about smoke-filled rooms, but all the party dignitaries, which were senators and and former presidents and and high-end party people got in a room they decide who they're going to nominate and they nominated them that's always the way it was done back to washington and so then the people demanded to have more say in who got elected the question i would ask is do the people really have control do the primaries accomplish anything i guess because in the end it gets rigged anyway Right. Um, or here's another thing to go back to 2016. We can debate this. If the people were really in control of the Democratic nomination last time, Bernie would have won. Now, the question is, you could then argue if you're a Democrat, maybe that was not a good thing to nominate him because maybe he had less of a chance of winning than Hillary. So do the people have the ability to identify who the most likely candidate to win is. I I don't know. Is, I get what you're saying, but I feel like I feel like the majority of and I don't consider myself I don't want to get into all that. I don't want to get into all that. Right. Um but I feel like the majority of people in 2016 would have said I I truly believe that the majority of Democrats believe that Bernie had a better chance of winning the overall election than Hillary did. So for them to put Hillary in as the candidate, like that was a, a down step. Like, and that's just my own opinion. I'm not yeah, basing not on any kind of stats or facts. Dude, at- like, I remember in 2016, I watched Bernie religiously, man. Like for at least a good month before they had the primaries, I was all for Bernie as well. I contributed to his campaign. I was like, man, this dude is 
listening to him Nobody talk. Nobody was talking about Hillary. No, exactly. And but Nobody. but but, but even young. even after she had won the primary and the, and then you know after all the, the the shit that had went on, like she had just had so much turmoil with the emails and all of her corruption and and uh, you know the, the her foundation and all this stuff, man. Like you're right. Like everything was pointing towards Bernie Sanders to be you know, a, a, the, the face of the Democratic Party. And I think it was clearly known, even on social media, even on the news networks, that they had no, they had known, minus CNN, that Bernie was the clear-cut choice breadwinner for the Democratic Party. And they went the opposite way. Well, here's the other thing you guys got to remember, though. The ability to win an election depends on winning the independence. And so there's always been an issue with the Democratic Party in the past that it's dangerous to go too far to the left mm -hmm. because if you go too far to the left, then you alienate the center and those people vote for the Republicans. Do you think Bernie, Bernie was way further left than Hillary was? I don't. Yes. Really? Yeah, he was. Yeah. Yeah. She, you, she's a centrist or left of center versus, I mean, he's basically a socialist. So you have That's to true. Farther but we're already, to we're already a socialist country. You know and, and, and that, and that's, that's where the real debate comes in is where the country's actually at. And as far right. as people still calling this a capitalist country and me being a young person, seeing Bernie Sanders in 2016, seeing Bernie Sanders in 2016, I'm like, man, this country isn't capitalist anymore. He's just going to do it a little bit better because a it, better we're, we're a corporate oligarchy uh, to begin with. The corporations run everything and I'm, and I'm tired of them absorbing everything. So now let's hit them a little bit, a little bit hard where we take some money from the people that have been taking money away from the common man kind of thing. So that was, that was my fight. And I, I was, I was willing to back Bernie Sanders, but yeah. Well, I mean, I'll there's a certain, I, certain idealistic element to that because I mean, and I'm on board with you guys. I'm very cynical about the government. I think it's a capitalist oligarchy run by rich, influential people. The whole country is so, even if Bernie got elected, what is the odds that all of the programs that he was proponent of would have been implemented? They would. Oh, oh, there's, man, there's no, no, there's no, no there's no way. Which comes but, back. But I would have stood with him. But I would have stood with him while he tried, though, right. and that, I actually would have paid attention. But you're not even it? knowing if he was going to try. That's what I've said before about the whole. At the end of the day, the president's just a face, man. Once they're once they're in, did Trump do the stuff that he said he was going to do? No. Did Obama yeah. do the stuff that he said he was going to do? No. They never like they're just a face, man. It's just another player in the game. Bernie, Bernie Sanders. OK, that that whole thing about being so radically different than everybody else. And he did have a socialist uh, agenda that oh, he didn't time. even try to hide. He didn't even try to hide right. it. But we were all right. agreeing with it so much because we saw the corporate greed that was taking place to where I mean, like Jeff Bezos hasn't been fucking taxed. I'm like, he has not been taxed, and he is the wealthiest man in the world, and minimum wage hasn't changed, and everybody's barely scraping by day by day. I'm like, there, there is some distribution of wealth issue that's, that's a problem here. I think uncorrupt capitalism is the best way to do things, but the problem is capitalism has become corrupted. So now you need to have the inverse to come in to help correct it. I'm like, that's just the natural way to go about things. Like, this isn't working anymore. The people are suffering. The, the money's not being, distribu being distributed well. This individual is going to come in and, and tackle that issue first, it's, which I think is important. It's, it's not like when Bernie got, if, if Bernie got elected, it's not like somebody just takes a light switch and goes, capitalism yeah, off, socialism yeah. now. No, no, it doesn't that, work that's like not, that. Yeah. That's not, but he's at least attempting to address the issue that's happening right here, which first and foremost, morality, I, I believe, changes between generations. What, what I believe won't matter in a hundred years because I won't be here. There'll, there'll be a different morality. What I can tangibly attempt to fix is the financial situation that's, that's happening in America. And there's a horrible distribution of wealth between the common man being able to pay for their, their daily, daily bills, their rent and working, working their butt off to be able to pay for these things. And they're, they're apparently the foundation of America because whenever COVID happened, they, they were called essential workers. They were like, without these people, without trash men, without people picking up your trash, without people being able to scan your groceries, like they're the, they're the core group of people that need to be worried about. Not, not the 1%, not the CEOs making sure that they make their money. And I agreed with this. And this is even pre all that. 
but man, I, I agreed with this this mentality. But I'll, well, I'm gonna that say was beautifully said. I want to say something in relation to Johnny's comment, which is I, I mean, and we haven't really hit this head on. I think every presidential candidate, and this is put together by their handlers, says whatever they think will get them elected. Yeah. So, Absolutely. so whether whether they implement any of that is a totally separate issue. Has Donald Trump mm-hmm. had Mexico build the wall? Has so, that happened yet? He he has built a little bit of the wall, but Mike, can you explain? Can you explain the electoral? <laughs> a bit of a wall. Can you explain the electoral college? Or do you know at what year was it implemented? When the Constitution was written, the electoral college was. Yeah, yeah. So it's been used ever since 1776. It's been used ever since, and the reason it's there is because the founders did not trust a winner-take-all vote among the people. Okay, so is and, there... and so they they is... said. We're going to have the electors from every state select the president based on those electors are elected by the voters. Is there any states where the elector doesn't have to follow what the people say? Uh, there's five or six, and they're trying to change that to make them do that. There, that there's, call, there's a – the term is not renegade uh, elector. There's another term for it, but it, it applies to someone who – doesn't vote with the rest of the group because like in Missouri, if Missouri goes Republican, all the electors that Missouri has will vote for Trump. Right. But what, what if one person said, I'm going to vote for Biden in, in a few states, you can do that. That's what I was talking about the other day. Where yeah. I was like, they literally, and I didn't, I didn't know it was only five. I thought it was a few more. I thought it was like 14 or something. So it's good to know that it's only five. Or well, I might be wrong. Okay. I don't know. And I don't know the actual four, numbers. It could be 10. I don't, I don't know. But the fact I, that that's even a thing that exists right. is like, huh. But see, here, here is the other thing. If we didn't have the Electoral College, then the small states would now count for nothing. Right. True. Because you would have California and New York and these other states determining who gets president. And so Iowa, Nebraska, Missouri, Wisconsin, North Dakota mean nothing in the election. And so those constituencies have no representation. They voted, but their vote was too small. There is no perfect way to do something, right? Right. <laughs> like, right? It, it, you know, that, that sounds just right on line with humanity, right? That there's no perfect way to do something. Correct. The, I, mean, I mean, it's because we're animals, not robots. Very true. Yeah. We, we make mistakes. We're not, I mean, and, right. I, and I always say this, but I think that the, the foundation of the Constitution is very, I think it's legitimate. We've had Dan on the podcast. And I mean, going away from that, I think if we were to get more towards the, the foundation of the Constitution, it's not, it's I think. Happen, man. No, and I That's know. another that. perfect world scenario. For, for sure. And you're, and you're right, man. But um, when it comes well, to. The, the founders knew it wasn't perfect. Um, I forget which one said this. It, it, may have been Franklin. I don't remember who, but one of them said, I hope it lasts 25 years. Right. Because they expected, not that they expected it to be discarded, they expected it to be modified. And it, well, I think, and I didn't even know this, but I think it's crazy that you talked about earlier how they, the, the primaries didn't even used to be a thing and that it would be the, the senators and other uh, former presidents that would actually decide that. That's, and re- recently, too, like 1950s, I think, is what yeah. Mike said. That's crazy. I like, didn't know that either. That's that's crazy. But, I mean, now just, like, seeing all this propaganda, in, in my opinion, like on TV and just watching the Chiefs game, that's the only TV I watch all week is three hours of football, man. And just the amount of voting it tells you, like, hey, vote, 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 it, vote, 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 vote. I'm just like, dude, do, do I need to vote? Like, am I going to vote? <laughs> like, shit, dude. It, it's, it's not even – it's not even so much that the Constitution is, because I, I, kn- I know enough about the Constitution to where the Constitution's not some evil written thing. It really is for the people. If you read it, it's, it's a people-based running the government scenario, which we yeah. have completely gotten away from. And, and I really believe that. But I think the issue with the Constitution right now is they didn't realize the advancement of technology and how people could be influenced. So there is right. nothing saying, there is nothing saying in the Constitution, which would have been written. So, okay, so just hear me out on this. If the Constitution were to be written today in the same manner 
strictly for the people, strictly for the people, there would be something saying in the Constitution that this overseeing entity, company, that decides what you get to see on social media, on CNN, on Fox News, needs to be uncorrupt and unbiased for for the people and by the people, right? Yeah. The very constitutional words I'm using here. But but they didn't they didn't know they didn't know the future. They didn't know how oh man, we're going to use the same constitution but then have all this have this media come to you and then it's completely misconstrued and and they're they're not abiding by any laws because there's no laws written I'm, for them i'm gonna there is no law written for oh it's a company it's a company right you you respect in in america you respect the company and then that that company now has so much power so much power and so much influence on the people that they're above government that does not sound very constitutional to me um, and, but in some way, in old school, which like I, I literally think our founding fathers, if they were to see us right now, they would want something written in that limits that limits these people because the whole point was the freedom of us, the freedom of the individual, the person working working here. Not, not about a monarchy. They were getting away from a monarchy. But that's what we have now. It, it's it's almost the same thing. If you're not born into it's a rich, literally the same. If thing. you're not born into a rich political family, you you have no you have no opportunity to ever run in politics. It is. I don't know if you wanted to take yeah, over. That. Yeah, I, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll let you take. I'm going to disagree with you actually. Not right. the whole rich political political part, but talking about if they were to write it today. Because even Mike brought up the newspapers and stuff back then. When they wrote it back then, excuse me. When they wrote it back then, they still talked about freedom of press and all this other stuff. They literally, Mike said, they were slinging mud at each other in the newspapers. Newspapers have always been in politics. Forms of media, let me finish. Forms of media have always been in politics. Once again, Facebook and Twitter and all this, that there doesn't need to be this overarching regulation. You know what we have to do as people is stop being idiots and fucking taking it for the fucking law. Exactly. If you don't like that everything's on Facebook, stop using Facebook. Stop getting your news from Facebook, your news from Twitter. Like, that's no different than the newspapers. They're just but they, broader. But the, the issue is, is that they have that position of power, and over a long enough period of time, they will make sure that now people take this as reality. The newspapers and, I mean, can you, do that, you too. Can say that. You can say that right now. But the, it needs to be regulated by the people, and you can't just be like, oh, man, it's a privately owned company. They can do whatever they want, and they have they've absorbed all that's, this power. That's our fault. It, it is probably our fault. is our fault. It is, but hold on, so and everything in humanity is our fault. Let everything me, in humanity stop, is our stop, fault stop. because me, we're we're imperfect fucking people. Mike, Mike, let me one second. I'm gonna bring. Sorry, your, Mike. Sorry, <laughs> Mike. Sorry, Mike. You need to be brought back into. This. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this back into a circle real quick, and then we'll, and then we'll hit back on on the on the train. But like we said earlier, you said when we were outside, you said you would give you would give the benefit of the doubt that most people in America have an understanding of what's going on yes they say, but yes and, no. and what johnny the majority and, of america is not ignorant they're but what, not stupid but hold on but what johnny they, they know the ins and outs of jesse it. did you not just listen to yourself man if most people were aware and not ignorant you would not have had to have made that statement that you just made about facebook being regulated and all these different exactly it's they, once there's no they, man, if they wrote the constitution so, today it's the same as the newspaper man it's exactly the same as the newspaper the the same way that i know drinking alcohol is bad guess what you still see me on the podcast drinking a truly every night right that's your choice and your fault every sunday every so night. you expect every person to be 100% perfect but the, the real evil is is the unregulated when they can give you any piece of bullshit that they come up with and they they say it's fact. You don't have don't to believe watch them. It. Don't, don't believe them, dude. You don't have Facebook. You don't have Instagram. But that's you don't the have only Snapchat. source you're getting your information from. All you're getting your information from is from social media and news networks. That is it. No, that's false. That, that is it, Mike. Where do you get your information? Uh, well, uh, the internet mainly. But I want to argue a couple of points. Um, I I look at Facebook as more. Da I disagree with Johnny in the sense that I think. Facebook is more dangerous than the New York Times. New York Times has 800,000 readers. Facebook has 2 billion. Mm -hmm. So their audience is bigger. And to me, that means they can have more influence. And 
to me, the social media are going the way, and this is an extreme context to put it in, but Nazi propaganda. And then let me just give an example. Trump said the other day on, I guess this was on Twitter, that people should not fear the virus. And he said it, I'm sure I understand what, why he said it. He said it because people have to live their lives. And he was trying to make a point. He got sick, went to the hospital, he got treated, he got out, and, and he was just citing that as an example. Facebook took it I down. Got, it got, got censored. Because and they said they censored it because it was erroneous and unfactual information. And and that you should live your life. No, this is I, the I, problem. I, this is the problem with these big corporations. Thank you, Mike. Right. This is the big problem with these big corporations because now they have control. They have control and censorship of what you are allowed to hear, and they shape it in the form that only benefits them. Don't use it. That's the no, only because, argument I need is don't fuck. No, I'm so tired. Of, no, had this, everybody's sorry, Mike. This it. is nothing against you. We've had this discussion yeah. a million times. Dude. No, no. Yeah, but see, you yeah. want the you're a libertarian, Jesse, and you want the government to regulate it like government regulation is going to make that better. You really trust the government. Man, to, the government, the government's man, man, gonna, right they're going to put their you, own propaganda no, no, in there. No, no it said, comes on us as you people said it last time too, to Jesse, stop right fucking this. no. listening. So I can, to them. I, I partially agree with you because I believe I'm, I'm a libertarian. I believe in freedom. You can do whatever, whatever you want to do. So can Facebook. They can censor the shit but out of you man, right now if they you want cannot, to. You cannot allow this anymore. That's no, true. This, we have we have reached a point, and I'm I'm kind of with Jesse. I, and I Mike want a restriction. This, like, I want a restriction. They, they should well, be held accountable for yeah. what what they're able to do as a corporation because of what. They're able to put out to literally what what Mike Anderson said. You said a hundred thousand people. Uh, oh, it's like eight hundred thousand. Like oh, oh, uh, New York Times. New York Times was eight hundred thousand. Eight hundred thousand people. Two, two billion on Facebook. Yeah. Two yeah. billion on Facebook. They people you are influencing, and they can literally, without any restrictions, because they're a corporation, be able to give you information that's comp comparatively unbiased. I'm going to make one more closing argument, and then I'm done. And this will only take – it's going to be like three sentences. And I'm going to hug you after this. Okay. I'm going to fucking hug it's you It's going to be like three this, sentences. I know we argue here's, about here's, this a lot. Yeah, we do. It's okay. Here's, here's my closing thing with this. You earlier said that you believe the majority of people are smart and, and, not, and not dumb and that the majority of Americans, whatever. We as a people, if you still right now truly believe that the news, Facebook, Twitter, CNN, any of these are news and not entertainment, you're ignorant. But that's what it was supposed to be. So you doesn't want matter. some regulation doesn't there. matter. You know what it is. Where do you get your information from then if that doesn't happen? You want some... The library. Go go get like, a book. Go get an almanac. Go get man, a... Man, no. No. We shouldn't have to live in a world. The whole point of government regulation is we shouldn't have to live in a world that corrupts us, that shows us things to manipulate us. The whole point of government is preventing things like this. I mean, I agree right? with you there. I agree right? with you there. Is that not the whole point okay, hold on. Let Mike, of the whole thing? And Mike, then you, you see got? Facebook do this? <laughs> All right, my what? bad. A couple more things. Um, to Johnny's point, point about if you don't like it, don't listen. Uh, I think I'm smart enough to know the truth from the lies in Facebook. But I fear for the people who don't have that understanding or intelligence to see the difference. So they're influenced by it. It, whether I watch it or not. True, and that's so scary. I, I don't like, yeah, that's that's a scary part. And I think, um, you know, we talked about newspapers during the revolutionary period. You guys know what libel is. You can be sued for libel mm -hmm. if you write something down that's false about somebody. And that was really big then. And so it got invented to, I don't know if it came from our country, it may have come from Britain even before we were founded. Uh, Facebook and Twitter, social media is not subject to libel, no, as far as I know. Zero. They no, they don't have rules like the print media has. They have, and so I'm on Jesse's page about they need some regulation to show that they're not producing a, a biased presentation of the world to their users. And, and, and what's so sad is is the news. The news corporations don't even follow those rules. No. Like, yeah. so you expect Facebook, a social media conglomerate, to, be, to do the same thing? That, that's ridiculous. It won't happen. But, it, but it's awful. But it's awful. It's an injustice. It's an absolute injustice, in, in my opinion. 
But I mean, we're the the media literally gets off on on shaping it their way. Man, I, I say this all the time. The news used to be, hey, we're gonna present the news to you, and then you get to figure out how you feel about it as an individual. That's not it anymore. It's though. not it anymore. They literally tell you how to feel about something now. Yep. Yep. It's it's corrupted, and and social media is even worse. So to try to even, I mean, there's layers there that we will never see in our lifetime, in my lifetime, that gets to social media that, that corrects that. And it's scary. It's very scary. 30 years ago, newspapers did not have an agenda. The agenda was to present both sides so the public could decide. And there was not a pride there. Present. There was a pride there, a sense of pride, yeah. right? There was a golden yeah. era, man. There truly was a golden era in the 1900s, is all I'm saying. And I, yeah. I and you just described it. That was probably the era when they, when you present both sides and you make the choice, that's beautiful, man. That's yeah. That, that doesn't exist. That's right. I guess that's what I'm getting at is that that's not the case anymore. And we can't act like that's the case anymore. So it's time for us to step up exactly. as people and individuals, when, not a conglomerate as on. individuals and say, and we're this isn't that. the case. I know. I know it's time to say, Hey, this isn't the case anymore. But we man, need to educate ourselves and learn. But you know what? But the change that you, you know what's the you know what the funniest part about that is? Like Talk Junkies is trying to do that, but we're being censored by YouTube because we're doing that. Yeah. No, <laughs> this is our fault for using YouTube, by the way. Yeah. But it's it's the way and you you make that when you create your channel and you sign that terms of agreement, that's your decision. I know, I know. But it's the only platform to, to get our voices heard. To get Mike Anderson's voice heard. To get well, Pat's, Pat's voice heard. Is another you option. Know? What's that? Patreon is another option. Yeah, there's Patreon. <laughs> there's Vimeo. There's a ton of other there's stuff. There's DTube. There's BitChute. There's, there's yeah. There is a lot. Yeah, but it's just but, but you're you're putting a band aid on a bleeding wound with with these ideas I, of 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 what is. I'm if not you, saying that Facebook's core, not evil. I'm sorry, my, I'm sorry, Mike. If you don't address the core issue, which it goes way further than that, and I could be wrong. I could. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Until you address the core issue of the corruption that's happening within the U.S. government right now, then things like this will always be a thing. And we're, we're hop, skipping a jump away from so, China. Hold on, hold on, real quick. D we're hop, skipping a jump away from China, how, how they are, uh, like just a handful of years yeah. ago. We've had I'm, John, I'm, not, I'm not okay with that. We've had John Kleisik on, and he's talked about how we're extremely close to exactly what China is. You're, you're completely right. But when you go back to Roman times, Mike, um, it, it was before Rome had fall, had fallen. Is this the same exact way that it had fell? Is history repeating itself in the same exact way? Well, yeah, it's very dangerous to try to apply history. I mean, the, the because no two situations are alike. I mean, basically, governments that have fallen in history have all fallen for the same reason. They lost the ability to govern, which is basically where we're at. To be honest, <clears throat> the Roman Republic was identical to our government at the beginning when the Constitution was written. It, it had a Senate, House of Representatives, and it had two consuls instead of a, a president. Because our, our model was the Roman Republic's model. And the Roman, at the beginning of the Roman Republic, the Senate had all the power. And the plebeians, who was the common, common man, lower classes, didn't have any. But smartly, the Senate gradually over time granted rights to the people that satisfied them. So it kept the, the government stable. But then they started to get social problems. This is, you know, after 300 years of the Republic, it lasted 500 years, you know, twice, more than twice as long as our country has been in existence. But after 300 years, it started to degrade poverty, social problems. Uh, the army was an issue, and really the uh, ignition point for the fall of the Republic was when the, because, let me talk about the army for a minute. The army was always a citizen army in the Republic. In other words, you were a farmer, and when you got, when there was a war, you went and served, and then you went back to your farm. So that there was no professional army. But uh, in about 110 B.C., um, the, there was a, um, general who changed the rules and he, because he had the power to do it and he created a professional army 
So the, at that point and from that point on, the soldiers were paid out of the spoils of battle. You know, so you defeat another army and you keep all their stuff, basically. But the thing that that changed is that switched the allegiance of the army from the Senate to the general. So now the generals were kingmakers. And so when Caesar became the outstanding general and most powerful man in Rome and the Republic, he took control. And of course, the reaction to that was his assassination because there were enough people that did not want a dictatorship. They killed him for it. But the Republic was dead. It was dead because it lost the ability to govern. Same exact thing. That's crazy. I mean, not crazy. You know what I'm saying? That's but it's not surprising. You want to get back to what uh, we kind of went. We digressed big time. We did. I want to get back yeah, to what I Mike guess. was originally talking about with uh, yeah, we just can... the elections and. Who well, we... I mean, yeah. Let me try and summarize that for a minute. No, again, definitely. To bring us back, so <clears throat> we have an election that is hauntingly similar to 2016 in the sense that it has the Democratic candidate way ahead, but. Are those numbers true or false? And I don't think we're going to know until election night. Um, I keep thinking that we'll know early because if it's a replica of 2016, Trump's going to win. If those beginning states like Florida or North Carolina, whatever, start going the other direction, he's going to lose. So, but it's interesting that, that I don't know, this shy conservative group of people you don't know how big that group is Mm -hmm. and maybe the independents are in that group too because they don't want to tip their hand because they're not party affiliated and they're not in a tribe do we know who's in charge of like if if i go to my local my local uh district and i vote where i vote those votes go there do you know where they go like is there a central place in each state where all the votes go to well every uh county has well the state's in charge of the voting for that state, and then the county's below that. So the county is responsible for counting all the votes and reporting the count to the state. So the state adds it all up. So I'm curious if they keep all the votes just in case. And in, in, in it's like, for instance, when you had the controversy in Florida and shit, like you're able to recount all the votes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Plus they have, if there's a recount, each party is allowed to have a representative there during the recount. So there's like one Democratic guy, one Republican guy watching to make sure that nobody cheats. In each state or just overall with all the votes? In each precinct, in each county. Okay, cool. Everywhere. But of course, I mean, you still have wholesale cheating. I mean, I agree with Trump in the sense that you can get, when you start getting harvesting of ballots, it's probably not a good idea. You got somebody driving around neighborhood to neighborhood. And, well, I'll take your take your ballot for you and submit it. That doesn't sound to be very seem to be very safe to me. Mm-mm. Not uh, at all. And there's there's the more there's an actual name for this, and I I literally was watching something about this the other day, and I can't remember what it's called, but it's basically the um it has to do with error. The more error or spots for error you add in, even if you've got whatever it's called like cover ups to stop that from happening. It's the more spots you add in for something to break, it's going to break, kind of thing. Like, if Mar- you like margins, like yeah, no, like from the so, if my option is to walk into a place, press a button, and that goes immediately to Washington D.C., that's one spot for error. If my option is I fill out a ballot and then I give that to my mailman, and then my mailman takes it here, and then this person takes it here, and then it's counted. That's so many spots. There's yep. so many spots for something to go wrong, whether it be human error cheating accident like it there's just too many spots so something is bound to happen it's true listen to this story uh there was a bus at o'hare airport cargo several days ago i think it was last tuesday or something and they found eighteen thousand american driver's licenses that had been printed in china and the people didn't really exist they were made up and they were all registered as Democrats. Jesus Christ, man. That's legit. How many times, how many times does that happen? That's legit. That's, that isn't the only case in the whole country, is it? I can't believe it, it would be. <clears throat> and I'm not blaming the Democrats. I'm, I'm just, I'm 
describing that story. You know what happens? It happens was. all around. It's too easy to. Uh. It's just China. They're like, they're, man, they're done with Trump, man. They're they're tired of the all the shit that he's done to them. Well, they, yeah, they want him to lose big time because they mm-hmm. don't. I mean, he's messed them up for four years. All right. So, who's winning the election, Mike Anderson? Give give me give me your opinion. Not not who you want to win, but who who is going to win? Um, I think Biden's going to win. And the reason I think that this, I read something yesterday about it and it really got me thinking. There's probably a, a fair amount of Americans who are tired of this four years of fighting and they don't want another four years of fighting. So whether they like Trump or agree with Trump or not, you know that if you get rid of him, you're going to get rid of a major focal point for fighting. Right. And so people may just say, I'm worn out, got COVID, fighting, you know, impeachment, everything. I don't want that stuff. I'm, you know, going to vote for Biden. So, and I don't know that Trump, Trump's lightning can strike twice. So I, my gut tells me it's Biden, but we're, you know, nobody knows, obviously. And, and I agree with you. I, I, I have said, I was like, there is no way. This campaign against the the slamming of this individual is so aggressive. Not e- not even to say that it it's not even deserved, but I'm like this is hard. I remember the Bush administration and just seeing the liberals just hating George W. Bush. You know, that was nothing like this. Yeah, no this yeah. this is a new level. This is like a new level campaign of like hatred for an individual. Um, so no, I, I agree with you. I, I think that too many people are fueled for this and and Biden's gonna be elected and nothing will change. <laughs> and then nothing will change. Well, nothing well, to our actual benefit as far as me, you or Paul or Johnny sitting here together. Guess what? Nothing nothing will change. Because us as ignorant Americans sit back and watch election after election. And then keep wondering why nothing ever comes back to us and why we're always so frustrated, you know? Well, what's going to be interesting about Biden being elected, if he is, is he's senile. So Kamala Harris will really be running the country. And, or, and, I, and I heard that debate from power, my... The power behind her, whoever that is. You know, so from, from my very Republican parents who I love to death, we're talking about that <laughs> over the weekend, about how she's... She's literally just going to take over. So that's that's how the Republicans are playing it, to where, like, don't vote against Biden. Like, Biden's senile. She's going to take over. She's the most left individual you've ever seen in your life, and, and it's going to be just god-awful for you. And what we really don't know is it's already kind of been slowly, progressively god-awful for, for every individual, and, and we really don't get anything done outside of what the individual wants, but... Well, that, that's my said, own opinion. Biden made a comment in the, early in the primaries that I never heard repeated or talked about since. He said, I'd be happy to be a one-term president. And maybe that was because his age, you know, he's going to be 78 years old. I mean, he's... He doesn't look 78, he, man. He looks 90, 95. Yeah, well, he acts 90. I mean, he yeah. can't... He can't... He doesn't have a complete focus. So If, if he's elected, will he become the oldest president to be elected. I know that there was someone else who got elected a second term and they were like 77 or something. No, he's the oldest. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to go. I I think that Trump is going to win. Uh, That's my, my, my thought process. I'm not who I want to win. You know, like throughout this podcast, I think you can kind of see how I, how I feel truly about it, but I think Trump will win. And the reason I say that is man, like, Throughout the, throughout the the history of time, the amount of time that people have had to have fought for many years and many years, four years is not a lot of years. Yes, uh, in in our time right now, like we are very, um, we want it now, we want it now, like we want instant gratification. But I think that there are enough people out there, and if the voting system truly works and the electoral college truly works the way that it's supposed to, I think that there are enough people out there, and I'll kind of agree with Jesse a little bit and say that. Man, I would not vote for someone who's seventy-eight and senile. 
Right. I just, I can't, I couldn't do it, man. If I, if someone put a gun to my head and said, Paul, you had to vote or I'm going to kill you and your family, I would vote Trump. I would do it. I would, you know, like that's just, that's what no, I would you, do. You vote yourself. You vote yourself because you can, you no. can write in, you can write in yourself in a ballot. But hold on, like, but hold on. You're saying so if you had to pick what, between the two. Listen, li- but what I'm you saying, had to pick between the what two? I'm saying, Mike, is like for, for people to vote for Biden because they don't like the fighting that's happened in the past four years. And if Trump is truly legitimate and everything that he has done and all the executive orders that he has done, he got rid of Obamacare, which did affect Jesse's life. And we've had these conversations. I went down the Trump train for a little I bit. Do, I do. All this stuff. I do. I you do know what I'm saying? Then then, then why not go another four years? It's That's very, a horrible it's, way to go about social. It's, but hold on. It's very obvious, like you stated, how, how against him they are, which if that is truly the case in the corporate media, social media, all these people are against Trump. Everyone's against Trump. Then you know what that says? Just it puts a little tiny bird in my head saying, "Well, damn, what is Trump doing to piss all these people off?" Like you said, Mike, he's not a politician; he's a businessman. We and talked I'm, about the quiet lot. Republican. But, we but talked I, but about the I'm, shy Republican. Man, I did not. That, I did not. I did is. not interrupt you. What I'm this? I'm just saying this is how I feel about all of this shit right now, and why I say that Trump will win, is because people see all the things that I'm saying right now. People see those things, and um, Trump recently just had coronavirus. Blah blah blah. And I think he's endorsing Big Pharma, which is a bad move by him. And he's trying to push mandatory. Or, damn it, you fucked me up, man. You fucked me up. I was going on a good tangent there, and you definitely got me done. That's why Trump will win. Sorry, I'm not going to continue anymore. People see that, and they're willing to go four more years of that rather than having a senile president who can't make complete sentences other than whatever they injected him with. He was on some sort of Botox in his yeah. eyes in that presidential debate. And not only that, he was on some uppers himself. People claim Trump's on uppers. Biden was on some uppers in that presidential debate because he didn't have that many slip ups like he does in speeches where he has no idea where the fuck he is. Trump right. will win. Johnny, what's up? Um, <laughs> man, I, you you know, thinking, Johnny? I don't know. It's hard because you know how cynical I am with all this. I'm like, no matter who wins, we lose. So I don't yeah. really fucking care. Yep. Um, yeah, but you got to pick somebody because yeah, we're going to have four if, votes who, here. Who, okay, so who's. Who do I think will win? Yes. I've been saying Trump will win, and they've both, they're both they both here to back that up. I've been saying that I think Trump will win. What? You've no, been... I, no, I'm, I'm Biden. I, I've said That's Biden. not what I said at all. I said, I think Trump will win, and you can both back me up in the fact that I've been oh, saying Oh, yes, that. yes, yes, abs- absolutely. Okay. okay, I misheard you. My bad. So My bad. I, I've been on the whole 80-20. I, 80% of me thinks Trump will win, 20% Biden, whatever. Recently, though, within the past like month, it has changed to a lot lower. Like I'm like now I'm only like 55 percent confident that Trump will win. And my reasoning is basically the same as Paul's and going off some just like math and statistics and second term election kind of stuff. But then like like I said, as the as time has passed by and I've seen everything in the media that I don't like to watch. But the stuff that I have seen, I'm like, man, it would not throw me for a loop if biden won i swear before i was like there's no way biden wins i was like there's no way biden wins if you asked me six months ago even after covid started if you asked me i would have been like trump's the winner clear cut his day he's going to get a second term now it's not so clear for me it's it's been muddied a lot as for myself and my own beliefs and who i would vote for and all that i i fuck i mean the historical trends are if president always gets elected the second term the economy's doing okay in the economy, parts of the economy that aren't doing okay are due to COVID. Mm-hmm. And, but the stock market has been, you know, performing very well the whole time. People have been making money. So it's a, it's about the economy, stupid, basically is the Clinton's line. Mm-hmm. So that will either be proven true or proven false this time, depending on whether people think they're better off or not. It's, it's, it's I've hard even, though. I've this... even heard like close family members talking about how if Biden gets elected, oh, expect your stocks to go to shit. <laughs> well, that all comes like, back up anyways. And I'm like, you you don't do stocks? You don't do stocks. You don't know how stocks work. They fluctuate. They, they fluctuate. Yes, there will be a partial panic. Partial panic in every pre- presidential election. Everything fluctuates. Everything trended up with Donald Trump for an unnecessary reason, by the way. I feel like he's, I, I mean, outside of the tariffs, outside of the tariffs, which everybody was on board with. I was like, yeah, we, we, we need to not support China, which I agree with because China's a mm-hmm. horrible, China's a horrible, um, totalitarian, totalitarian, totalitarian. <laughs> I can't even say the word right now. 
state where they oppress people and then their wage is so bad, but we're the same thing. We are, I don't think people realize how close we are to them given comparative wage to CEOs in, in America and CEOs out in China. I don't think you realize how well, we get super passionate about that, but we don't realize how close we are to them. We are so close to them. And also the government taking, you know, taking advantage of social media and things like this. We're very similar to very similar to China. But that's But you want the government to regulate social media more. <laughs> the government's taking advantage of it, but you want them to be the ones in control of it. No, because pure pure government pure government run is run by us. So I'm saying Okay, so no, the you're, you're no, talking about a perfect world off, scenario. Fuck off real quick. What you're saying is, oh, the government that's right now is uncorrupt and they should have everything to do with it. I'm saying the people have lost their control of it. We need to step back in and say, hey, it's not okay to be able to, you know. I agree with you. There you go. Thank you. But that's you said the government yeah, should regulate just, it. That's not where we're at. Anyway. We are the government, though. No, we're in, not. In a, no, in you really think we, you're talking no. about a perfect world scenario. That's not the real world, Jesse. So let's get back to where we're yeah, the I'd actual love to government, do that too. Yes, yes, and yes. we actually run things. I'd love to do that too. And then we're we can in agreement. regulate them and actually put people accountable for what they're saying. Because we have politicians come in day after day telling us this is what it's going to be. I'm going to put Hillary Clinton behind bars. I'm going to put Hillary Clinton behind bars. I'm gonna, the emails, the emails, all this. No, nothing's ever done. We and agree. All, and all we do is sit around and go, oh, man, this guy's on my side. He's never on my side. None of them are on our side. Mike, who is, who's going to be the politician have, that's on our side? Have you ever once in your life thought about running for like city council or anything like that? No. Why not? I hate politics. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. You'd be we real. All hate you, politics. That's why man. you'd be. That's why you'd be a good leader. So that's why you'd be a good leader. We hate it. We so we, hate it. So like, it's too, too frustrating. Jesse's Jesus going on this Christ. tangent, and it and it truly and and this is how brainwashed we've all become because we've had this conversation multiple times, and it's like uh, how frustrated Jesse just seemed right there how easy it would be for him to wake up tomorrow and involve himself within local politics to try and change something. And not just Jesse, Johnny, and myself included, within our own city, to try and impact our city in a positive way to maybe progress that sort of uh, idea of getting back to what is fundamental and giving the government back to the people. But we don't do that because we're brainwashed into doing just waking up and, and maybe not my, even brainwash, job, just lazy, lazy. So my job is an individual. My job is an individual. And everybody's job is an individual, in my belief, is to show unconditioning love to other people that you don't For know. sure. And I'm, I agree. We, and you show and love respect, and we all show love. And respect everyone. Respect everyone. And then, man, just try to make the best out of it. Because this is a, it's been a shit show since the dawn of time. So just try your best respect everyone never judge never judge show a janitor and a ceo the same amount of respect you know what i mean i feel you man you, i feel you but no, i, I want to get down respect, i, 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 I mean, want to get back to the that's, election that's part job. The, the politics part that's our job but mike so can you explain to me that like, changes things within itself in having that mentality in roman times like in the final times of 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 when it had collapsed what it was like like what how did it collapse? I mean, I know you briefly went into that, but what was the over... I mean, it, it went down. How did it go down? Complete war, chaos, buildings just destroyed, everyone died. Like, what happened? Not a building got... single building got destroyed. The government changed, basically. The, the, Caesar took power. Then he was... Actually, there were two guys, dictators, before him. One... Uh, was quickly taken out of power. The second one became a dictator, but then retired because he didn't want to be a full life dictator. Then Caesar was the third one. He was assassinated. Now, following his assassination, uh, Augustus, who, Octavian, which, who became Caesar Augustus, got in a war against Mark Anthony. So they fought many battles to see who would succeed Julius Caesar and Octavian won. And he made himself, uh, and this is an interesting story too, very interesting. Uh, he made himself dictator, but he pretended like he restored the Republic. So he created a model government that was just like the Republic used to be. And he called him, he called it a prince, uh, principate. And he was the leader 
like the council, but he was really a dictator. But he made it look like it was the republic. Boom. So that was the one who got assassinated, still, right? No. Huh? No, no. The, Augustus, oh, not Caesar got assassinated. No, Augustus uh, served for four. He was uh, emperor for forty-one years. Damn. So yeah, it was a dictatorship for but, sure. But um, the people were happy because everything got back to normal. They had a false and sense of. It appeared that they were living in the republic, and the economy was good, and they were able to eat. That's and all there we were want. jobs and all that stuff. So You're we need... asking for too much. I'm just saying that sounds very similar. Granted, we it's every four years for us, but that sounds very similar. Like we have a false sense of republic here in the United States. Like we, everyone thinks everything's fine. Like to me, that that's identical to what the United States is. The thing that that separates our situation to me, and we can argue whether it's I'm right or not, is the large changes that have taken place in governments and history have all been directly uh, related to military power. You know, Fr the French Revolution ha happened, it was because whoever controls the military can control the government because you have to have physical power to do it. So what are your thoughts, and, but, and Jesse and Johnny are big well, on this, is that if we're in a one-world economy now, so we don't even need war. So it... You know, North Korea can, 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 like yesterday, they showed this big, you know, ballistics missile. There may not even be anything in there. They're just showing a power, like, they're showing us that. That's probably, that shit's probably empty. Well, well okay. No. To, to go back to what Paul is talking about, how I, I don't ever think that there will ever be a World War III because people are too intertwined now. It's always been my debate behind it. Evil things can happen you know, morality comes into play, but the issue, the real issue we're is... We're a one-world economy now. Is, is, we're all, we're all yeah, connected. No, Don't make it long, all, Jesse. Don't make it long, bro. We're a one-world economy. Yeah, so how does so, that... So if you, if you try to attack Europe, like if we were to try to attack Europe for whatever reason, we would trash our economy over that. And then it would... People would lose money. The 1% would lose money. I heaven forbid they'd lose their fifth house you know, in, in the Bahamas, and then, like, maybe maybe 100,000 people die. I mean, like, who gives a shit? No, but you, know you guys are talking about like, us attacking somebody else. And, and that's, about... that's, that's the interconnectedness of, of our economies now. Yeah, but and, I'm and talking the about world us banks, The world our... banks are interconnected. I'm talking about us attacking ourselves. I'm talking about somebody internally getting our army to take over our government. Forget all the other countries. Like a, like a, like a coup? Huh? Yeah. Like a, like a coup? Good luck. Yeah. He, he'd be he'd be dead tonight. The guy yeah, that man. sparked the idea would be dead Dude, the, fe I, the federal no, government. he's talking about the military. He's not talking about a revolution. I, I want to I hear. So hold on. Let, let Mike talk. I want to hear this out. Yeah. So like, hold on. Before we go into it, like you had those people in Michigan, those five people who were actually indicted on a plan to kidnap the governor. So something similar right. to that. Right. Only it's going to take the Joint Chiefs of Staff or something. Right. It's going to take the people that are high enough up that the military will follow. And I mean, there's an interesting TV show on about this right now. And it's, it's on uh, Hulu. I don't know if you guys watch Hulu or not, but, um, and it's, you know, kind of an odd, strange show, but it's called the handmaid's tale. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. I've seen the first two seasons. That that I would never want to live in a life like that. I've never right. heard of it. The story of the hand. It, what basically what the story is, Johnny, is there's a future state of America where, because of pollution and and other environmental problems, women gradually start becoming sterile. So more and more women can't have kids, and then the human race, the American. Uh, society is dying out, fewer and fewer people. So these guys decide they're going to take over the government and use women who can have children as captives and control them having babies so they keep the population going. Which they're basically, successful. Sounds like an interesting TV show. It is, yeah. Right. It, but the story is set, basically, they, the and it's it has biblical connotations. There, these These people are religious believers and stuff like that but the when the story starts they've taken over new england 
So the rest of the United States is the United States, but these guys control England. And they've got an army and they've got blockades and nobody can get into New England because they control it. So, you know, that's the kind of thing that it, I mean, it's kind of a similar thing to what we've been talking about. So that, and that's kind of what happened in Rome. That's how it, how, how, how it had fallen. Yeah, well, I mean, when, when Augustus took power, there was no, I mean, he was seen as the next logical leader of Rome, so there was no fighting. I mean, once he defeated Antony, he had control of the army, so he just started governing. So why do they call it the fall of Rome? Why do they call it? Well, you're, the fall of Rome is the fall of the empire, not the fall of the republic. So Rome was a republic for 500 years, then it fell, then it became an empire with an emperor running it, became an authoritarian dictatorship until from uh, 30 BC to 476 AD. And that's when it fell. It fell because uh, barbarian tribes from Germany and other countries attacked Rome and took it over. So the, the, the government was destroyed and the economy was destroyed. And that really destroyed Europe basically and led to the dark ages because there was no government left. So people went back living in huts like there was no civilization. Literally just living day to day, like homeless, separated. Uh, homeless people. Well, there, were, there were no laws. There were no books. There were no education. So it went back to primitive times, basically. It took, the, that, that, so that was 476 AD. It took till three or 400 years for governments to start to show up in Europe again. Do you, do you think, Mike? Let me ask you, and I don't know how much time we have. Let me ask you a question real quick. Do you think that it is possible or probable in today's modern world that we will see something like that happen, like to such a degree? Because we've got such infrastructure and such a huge. Basically, what I'm saying is, in the modern world, and maybe not in our lifetime, but 400 years from now or something, do you think America will fall? or Europe will fall, like? Well, I'm, the cynical part of me is that because anything is run by humans will eventually fail because humans corrupt everything, ultimately. I mean, they get complacent, uh, power and money talk, uh, idealism d gets destroyed, and then it dies. It that's, must die. That's the I overarching mean, theme, but, like, I, I just want to further your question, Johnny. Do you see – do you – if you had to predict when, would it would would it be within the next hundred years? Do you think that America could fall? Uh, maybe, but, but but let me answer it this way: There's plenty of other countries that would fall first before us. Yeah, yeah. Like Greece would fall, or something, or Spain well, would fall well, because you, they're they're in so much better worse shape than we are. I, I talked about China. Like, like you really need to see some undergoing thing with China because they're they're closely related, right? And and even people talk politically about how Donald Trump wants to separate from China, which is such a weird thing because all those people are fighting for is like wages, very much capitalistic ideas in Hong right? Kong. In Hong Kong, which a lot of the protests happened were in Hong Kong. I mean, but we have to back those people up, though, right? And a lot of people did, yeah. But there was... I thought that entire fight was about extradition. But, uh, no, the no, was no. About there, there, is, there is a mis... Absolute abuse of fucking individual fucking people to where you're like, man, this idea does not work. Uh, that, what's happening in China is awful. And people forgot about it because coronavirus, everything that happened, elections happened... We forgot what happened in China. People in China are suffering right now, suffering, working like 20 hour days with minimal pay. Social credit. To, no, this. no, all, all this in, in what, what they were telling us as this abuse is happening, they were warning us. They, they said, Hey, you need to get your shit together because you're the next ones to have have this issue. Well, within those protests, we're not they, that far off. Within those protests, they had American flags I don't at think those protests. I know. I don't think we're that far off. Yeah, I don't we, either. We are not. You're that talking far about off. Hong Kong, huh? Just, 
You're talking about Hong Kong. Yes, yeah. Pre, pre Corona. Hong Kong pre -corona was a capitalist place. And Britain and had was, they the Britain the, Britain the treaty they had with Britain had, Brexit. Had it. You're talking about the Brexit. No, no it's not Brexit. It's not Brexit. But it, Britain had a treaty with China to give up Hong Kong in whatever year that was, 2005 or something. Mm -hmm. So there was a, a an agreement, and then when that agreement state came, that China took over Hong Kong, and of course wanted to make it part of the communist state. So they started limiting. These people don't want to be communists. Huh? Those people what? don't want to be communists. Obviously right? not. <laughs> They're begging. Like, right, like begging for their rights. Like, this is ridiculous, right? right? Um, th that, was a, that was a lot of good stuff said right there, Mike. Um, I mean, we're a little bit over the hour right now. I think we had a, a lot of jam-packed information in there um, for people to listen to, man. Um, I think the most important thing right now is just people really opening their eyes and just being aware of what's going on. I'm not trying to tell you what to do in any way, shape, or form. What I please do ask of you is just open – keep your mind open and look at both sides. Like I'm willing to look left. I'm willing to look right. But most importantly, what I'm really trying to do is just try and find knowledge and just trying to better myself as a human being and as a father and as a friend and as a brother, that's what is important to me. Um, so I could just ask any, anyone watching this, that you just do that as yourself. You, you can do it or not do it, but um, I don't know if you guys have any closing re remarks, but I don't, what you got, Mike? Why well, you can live a, a wonderful life without government? I mean, the government you have to pay your taxes to the government, but that's pretty much it. So if you dedicate your life to your family, your friends, your community, um, you can have a very full life. There you go. Well said. Well spoken. Absolutely. And like Mike had said, he is he's finished his third book, and, and hopefully he has it out before the end of this year. I'll have descriptions below on where you can find both of his books. Um, Mike, if you could shoot me a link on where they could buy those books other than Amazon, that would be ideal because we're not trying to feed into Amazon right now. I mean, Jeff Bezos is $60 billion over uh, what his net worth was before pre-coronavirus. So that would be awesome, man. Okay. Um, and um, also, I'll, I'll, I'll shout, shout you out on your blogs and have your blog post in the description below as well. I don't know. Are you still doing blogs? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Yep, so we'll have all that in there, man. Mike, thanks for joining Talk Junkies, man. It's always a pleasure having you on. Dude, We when we go outside and we just have normal conversation, man, we're like, we fucking love Mike. Dude. Love having Mike on. Yeah, always, well, every, every time. We, we love yeah, him. We'll get together and, uh, after the election and talk about it, and we got two of us are going to be right and two of us are going to yeah, be Yeah, we said right. Biden, Biden, Trump, Trump, Trump not Trump, who we're Trump. voting for, just who we think. Right. But there, there will be no there'll, there'll be no pride taken in it when it, whenever it happens no. because you get to watch pretty much if the same thing happen. Man, that, yeah. that's for a different podcast. I won't, yeah. I won't even get into that. The weirdest part, though, Mike, but, before you leave, was the simple fact that um, this weekend I was asking Johnny and Jesse who we should ha should have on this week, and Saturday I was about to email Mike to have him come on the show and see if he would join, and I didn't get a chance because I was busy at work, and Mike actually had texted me and said, "Hey, we need to do a podcast about this and that." It was just oh, I didn't know that. That's yeah. perfect. But Mike didn't say today. He had just said, hey, we should do one before the election. And then I had reached out to Mike and had a phone conversation with him. And he had, you know, obviously. I, I get this one one word message back uh, or two. How about tomorrow? <laughs> or, or how about Sunday or whatever? And he's just like, OK. And I'm like, bet. <laughs> I got to think fast. Yeah. Well, thank you, sir, for such a short <laughs> notice, man. I appreciate that. No problem. Anytime. Thanks, right. Mike. Mike Anderson, ladies and gentlemen. Have, have a good night. You see it. Bye. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Mike Anderson joining the show once again. Uh, just a beloved guest that just joins our show. Really greatly appreciate him, man. So awesome. Yeah. Um, best thing you guys can do, uh, if you like this video, honestly, is just share it, like it. Uh, like like it, man. Just It's a little thumb that's like this. If you don't like it, then press that one. You know what I'm saying? This podcast we just had was pretty fire, so hit that like button, man. That'd be awesome. Check out Mike Anderson's books right here. He's got some great Aggressive books. Aggressive gene, tribalism. And honestly, man, both of Mike's books are very important right now because what we're dealing with is tribalism. So read, I mean, just just check it out. If you want to rent it from me for a cent or two a day, I don't know, man. I'm just kidding. Uh, then do that. But, um, yeah, hopefully you guys subscribe. Hopefully you or just buy the it video. yourself. Click the link in the description below to buy the book from Mike. Exactly. Definitely do that. Um, so all our junkies out there, stay fly and bring the
One you love to try to persuade them You're here to save them Chance after chance after chance you gave them And you try to understand that the way they behave And it's only natural You made it this way Hey, I owe you so why should they pay To them I'm a superhero but to you I'm a nemesis So we steady going back and forth and no one's admitting this And it's killing me and not just mentally Sometimes it's hard for me to operate physically You took three of my lives Now you working on the last one So please don't take me under And at night I wonder Do they stare out their bedroom window Hoping they will see me in the sky when the wind blows But I just taking a stride Knowing one day every superhero must superhero. die High in the sky Someone you hate for always making you wait on every birthday. You steadily missing out on every first wall, every new smile whenever they first talk. To their first day to school with the character backpack, packing their first lunch with a fruit punch and a snack. To sitting them on your lap and reading their favorite book. You can't help but laugh because they give you that crazy look. I say, I say. Just say nothing, I'm strong as rock, so I'm not budging I'm sorry that I can't afford your budget So you take this beautiful picture of me and smudge it But they see the cake with the S on my chest And they think the superhero is the very best So no matter what your mommy engraves in you Daddy gon' always be here to save you I'll be your superhero If it's wrong, if it's right, so I know you'll sleep safe tonight.